Today I'm going to take you back to the olden days and make a dish that I haven't actually made myself for a long time just because uh, I was overdosed on it uh, a long time ago. But it's a really good dish and for some reason um, it kind of came back into my mind here in the past week or so. We actually had a big discussion about it on uh, my Helga's Pennsylvania Cooking Facebook page and uh, that is cornmeal mush. And you're probably thinking, if you've never heard of it, you're probably thinking, what? So a, couple, a little bit of history about cornmeal mush. Um, it's very big here in Pennsylvania Dutch area. Um, it actually was very big from the colonial period on up. When the colonials got here to America, they uh, obviously needed some help surviving from thanks to the uh, Native nations. And the Native nations had uh, a couple different varieties of corn. They actually made four, they actually grew four main kinds. And uh, they showed the colonials how to make a few things. Now, mush is actually the Americanized version of what they would call in uh, the olden days porridge. And all cornmeal mush is, um, and I'm making the kind, I'm basically going to make cornmeal mush for frying for you. You don't have to uh, do it that way, but I'm making it that we're going to fry it. Basically all cornmeal mush is um, a finer form of, of polenta. Polenta is just coarse ground cornmeal um, that is cooked down and you can make it into cakes or whatever. And uh, cornmeal mush, you can use any uh, ground corn, um, cornmeal, finer, they, you know, they prefer not be super fine, but it's hard to get coarse ground cornmeal anymore. Um, I would have to special order it around here. I basically have a choice of one kind. <laughs> so that's what we're using. For the cornmeal mush, what we do is we cook it down. The, the trick to this, when you're doing cornmeal for mush, is that it is uh, slow cooked for hours to really get it nice and soft and, and just cook it down and get that flavor. So it takes, this takes a while to cook it down. We're talking some hours. <laughs> but it's worth it and what I'm doing is enough for a batch that will go in a loaf pan and cool and when it's cool you can slice it like we would scrapple and you fry it up and then put a little maple syrup on it. Some people do gravy over it or other stuff but you know maple syrup in this household. So I'm going to show you how to make uh, fried cornmeal mush. In this recipe it's basically one cup of cornmeal to one quart of water. For the mush, uh, to do it in a loaf pan, I'm adding some flour. But if you're just doing it to, to cook up on the stove, it is. One cup of cornmeal to one quart of water. I'm doing three cups of cornmeal to three quarts of water and a half cup of uh, flour. Yep, this is it. Three cups of cornmeal and three quarts of water and half a cup of flour. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our water going so it comes up to a boil. And yes, I'm doing this in my cast iron in the Dutch oven because you cannot really duplicate that flavor. You can do it other ways, but this is, you know, cast iron over a fire all day was how they used to do it. And I have found doing it in other vessels, even in the crock pot, which you can do it in the crock pot. Um, it still doesn't have the same flavor as doing it in the cast iron. So I've got a Dutch and a cast iron it is. Now, while that's coming up to a boil, I'm going to mix our cornmeal and our flour. I'm just going to give that a mix like this. And then I'm going to add enough water um, out of that three quarts that this gets moistened up almost like a batter before we add it to the boiling water. So I've got this pretty well all mixed up. I used probably about one quart of that three quarts to uh, get this incorporated and mixed up here. And now we're just going to wait for 
the water in the Dutch to come to a boil and we'll do the next step. So we're up to a boil and this next step is going to require some patience because we're going to put it in the boiling water and we're going to stir it pretty constantly for about 10 minutes and then we will reduce it down to a simmer and it's going to simmer for a few hours usually around four to five um, it's gonna smell good though <laughs> and every so often you know you come over and you give it a good stir you want to really get this stirred in well because that little bit of flour and stuff will clump up on you if you don't do that so Get this into a nice stir and look at how that's thickening up already. And I'm going to lower my heat while I get this stirred in. So it's uh, medium to low. This looks like here as we get this all stirred in. And like I said, for the first 10 minutes here while well, it's really getting incorporated, I'm doing this. So we'll be back in a little bit. So it's been a couple hours, a few hours, and uh, just want to show you it's cooked down. You know it's thick. I'm going to put the remi remainder of this into a loaf pan and it's going to go in the refrigerator to set so that uh, later we'll slice it off just like we would slice a uh, scrapple off and fry it up nice and crisp. So here it is in the loaf pan cooked down and you can see it's it's really you know it's pretty firm and like I said we're gonna let that ch get chilled and it'll set up it into a nice loaf that we can slice and fry. So this is chilled down so we're gonna take it out of the loaf pan. There you can see it. It's nothing fancy. Doesn't look like much I know, but we're going to give it some, a couple slices. We're going to cut off a couple of slices. And fry them up. And the nice thing about this is, is you know, you can take these and um, the way I do scrapple is I'll cut it in slices like this and uh, we vacuum pack them in individual slices like six to a pack. You can do the same thing with this. So it might take a while to do a pot and do a loaf, but you know, like we're going to have several meals out of this. So, because usually two slices is plenty for me uh, to fill me up. So, um... We'll get to the next part. So, we'll get to the next part and get to frying. And time to hit the pan. Almost done. So, we're done frying it. And you can see it's nice and crispy. And, uh, of course, now I gotta add the maple syrup. Because everything's better with maple syrup. Especially if you ask my mom. But especially this. This makes it. Some people do it with um, sausage, gravy, or other different things, but this is the way we like to eat it. So, uh, you know what comes next. So, there you can see it. And like I said, you know, it's such a simple, humble thing, but boy, this has uh, saved a lot of people over the years. It was big during the Great Depression as well. Mm. Really good. Now, I'm told that uh, people can still order this at Bob Evans' restaurant. I haven't been to one of those in, I don't know, 15 years. <laughs> so I can't vouch for that, but the people that have had it there say it was good. 
So if you want to try it, you know, on your own. Uh, also, I might add that you can make uh, like buckwheat mush. That's actually pretty traditionally German. Uh, my dad did it when I was little. He actually, he actually grew buckwheat. And I can give the recipe for that as well if people want it. If you do it right, that comes out almost looking like the Spitzel does. Spitzel does. So, and fry it in, in bacon fat. So it's almost, it's almost like having noodles. Um, really yummy. But, uh, yeah, this has been a, this was a staple for a lot of years. So, I took you back down to really olden times with this. I think some people have forgotten about it, but it's still around, still works, still good. So that's uh, cornmeal mush for you.